G'day and welcome back to my channel. Well look, the Hansa Brandenburg's built. <laughs> nearly, nearly. It's amazing how fast things come together once you've got the fuselage made it up and then you basically start putting on wings and struts and things. Boom! The next thing you know, you've got an aeroplane. So this time I'm going to show you how I made up the machine guns, how they went on, how of course the fuselage was finally buttoned up and it went together really well. Just a couple of little things to look out for. And then I started on, as I said, the wings and the struts and the tailplanes and the aerolines. I'll talk all about these things because that all happens really fast and you start to get a result. And it's got me a little more excited about this build because as you know, if you watched last time, I was getting pretty depressed about buttoning up that whole interior that I spent all that time on. Now I've forgotten about the interior and I'm really excited about the airplane as a whole because with the wings on and the struts, it is looking mighty. All right, does that sound interesting? I hope so. Okay, roll the music. <laughs> Since the last video, I have filled the uh, seam lines. They're not too bad actually on the fuselage here. There was a little bit of um, stagger there that needed filling. Tiny bit needed filling here and the join of the back of this, um, this open piece here for the gunner. The um, worst section is here. Actually, I thought this would be the worst because in the video, this is where I had last video. I couldn't get that together. I had to clamp that absolutely severely and um, there still was a tiny gap. Well, actually, the uh, Revel Contactor melted most of it together when it was left overnight and it actually didn't require much filler at all. Just a little bit here on that um, that little bit of edging that goes on the, um, the back of the cockpit and yeah, I was quite surprised. The worst one is here, which behind the motor, which is problematic because there's all these things in the way. And I nearly thought of pulling all those off and spacing it all out, but quite frankly, I'm going to hand paint in here, hairy brush, and that's why I've put a few things on, because I really can't see how I can mask this up and mask up the cockpit without making an absolute mess of things. So I'm only going to airbrush really from there back, you know, the sides and at the bottom. The um, the bottom made it up very well actually, required virtually no filler, and sanded up nice and smooth. The only spot that I needed. A little bit of filler was just here on the edge leading up to the radiator. I put the radiator on because that will be the same color as the fuselage as I paint it. Now I'll probably need to hand paint this area here and um, this, well, it looks like it's in the way it's not, it's only dry fitted, but I've started working on the machine guns. So I thought I'd show you what we're going to do with those and then we will paint those up, but we'll paint those up off the model. Now you do get the option of a version without photo etch. So you get the option where it's basically been molded, the um, cooling jacket there. And it's it's obviously not as detailed. It'd be a lot easier to put on the model because you know you don't have any mucking around to do with photo etch. Now strangely on both options, the hole inside of these things, I don't know how much you can see, the whole interior has all this detail. The um the ammo run, all the bullets there. The bracing, the bracketing, it's all there. And it's never going to be seen. Never, ever. No, because that goes up hard against the fuselage. Unless there's some way you can bracket this to open out, I don't know. Maybe you can. Maybe you can put the thing so it's in maintenance mode and that folds open. Maybe that's the reason why. But it's not sort of um, mentioned in the instructions. It just, you know, I'd look at the parts and thought, again, a whole lot of um, detail we're never going to see. Yeah. But the option that I went with is to cut out the parts that are just like this. So they're exactly the same except the cooling jacket's not on there. You just get the basically the barrel. And you get a little tip piece. Now this tip piece is separate. Okay, and you can see the size of my finger there. That is less than two millimeters in diameter. And it is hollow, which is nice. So basically you've got a nice hollowed out end. And I suppose that's the reason they did it. They modeled this separately and it 90 degrees flipped up on the um, on the um, sprue so that they could put a hole through it without you know, slide molding. But that was a bugger to put on, it really was. I could hardly see it, I could hardly hold it. It had also been attached on both sides. So you had all this cleaning and cutting to do. Uh, you just, 
a very fiddly part. Quite frankly, I would have just as easy cut a piece of evergreen sprue. Like I've got ever evergreen sprue tubes, just cut a tiny little two millimeter piece of evergreen sprue tube and put it on and got exactly the same result. So without all the cleanup mucking around. And even now, I don't believe that's perfectly round. It'll be rough as guts, but it'll get painted black and we'll hardly see it. So um, yep, again, the inside fully detailed with the ammo running up to it, bracketing. Yeah, don't know. If you know that you can mount this open somehow and see in there, let me know because it seems sort of pointless. But anyhow, what I thought I'd show you now is um, how to roll that uh, photo etch cooling jacket because it's really not that hard. And a lot of people sort of struggle and, and balk with photo etch. But quite frankly, the photo etch option for this kit is the way to go. It's, it's not hard at all. It's very easy. So let me show you that. Now there's not a lot of photo etch in this kit. You get the cooling jackets for all three guns and their sights. Uh, there were a few, uh, well there was one part which was a steering part, I think I've got a photo of it here, uh, that went in to um, basically as, as part of the steering wheel. And, um, and that's not it, there's a few little things that go on the fuselage and detail. There's not a lot of photo etch. So it's really not that scary, but it's just enough to raise a model and make it look good. Now a lot of people might use a hobby knife to cut photo etch. Well, wouldn't advise that ever because you'll bugger up your hobby knife. You'll bugger up your blade straight away. You're cutting metal, so you'll dull your blade and then it's useless on styrene. If you've got a foldy tool, usually you get a nice safety razor and that is a better option if you're going to use the knife method. You'll need a very hard surface, so I've got a block of wood here. If I wanted to cut things out, I would you know, paste down the, the blade and cut it that way. But another way that is easier and will work most of the time is using a specialized tool. This is a Zuron photo etch cutter. It's very pointy, it's very sharp, and it makes the whole thing so much easier because not only will I be able to cut these off very easily, I won't have to sand them. I won't have to get the file out and file anything smooth. And I don't need to anneal. A lot of people seem to think you need to anneal photo etch. Well, if it was stiff, um, like zinc photo etch, maybe. But if it's just very thin brass like this one, you um, can use your little cutting scissors. Let's see if I can get in there nice and tight. Usually I can. Here we go. Now, I have got in there so tight that that doesn't even need to be filed. And the same on this side. Nothing. There's no edge, nothing like that. No annealing, no needing to um, use the file. Just cut your parts out with these scissors. They are that good. Now, how do we make it round? Wing Not Wing say in the instructions that that piece needs to be rolled to three millimeters. That's rather handy. So you hunt around for something the right size. It just happens although I wasn't going to use my files, I do need them. This file, my round file, happens to be 2.9. You need the size or smaller, usually just a fraction smaller. I mean, if it was a big roll, a big thing you were rolling, you'd probably start with something much larger and work your way down, like a large cylinder, medium cylinder, and finally down. But for this one, it's so thin, and it's, um, it's really... Not going to be that hard. Now it has a side where there's a bit of detail and the side that's flat. So the side that's flat has got to go into the middle of my file here. Now it's this hard. Okay. Any of you smoked out there and rolled your own? <laughs> it's, it's as easy as that. Okay, so now I want to make that a bit tighter, I could go to a narrower section of my file and roll it just that bit tighter. And then when it springs out, lo and behold, it's actually joined up hard. And now the moment of truth. Make sure we match up those little slot there 
and there's a little tab there. We've got to match those two together. And if we do, this should then squeeze onto there perfectly. There we go. And it sits just right. You'll notice the barrel is sitting in the bottom of the tube. That is correct. That's how it goes. It's the bottom of the tube. The cooling tube or the cooling jacket is um, over the top and not at the bottom. Heat goes up. Yeah. All right. So that is that one. And that is that one. Now, I'll need to pull the photo itch off very carefully, paint it and paint all these parts up off the model. It's not really until I've got the wings on this thing and they're just dry fit for the moment that I'm getting to appreciate the size of it, just exactly how big this thing's going to be. And um, I'm going to have to get another display cabinet. Really, this, um, this is the largest aircraft kit I've ever made. So um, that's interesting. That's interesting. Now, I have got those machine guns sitting in there very nicely now. And they hold in a lot better once you put the little ammo returns, which I didn't have on before when I made up the sub-assemblies to put the ammo returns on. And those parts are still just dry-fitted, and the um, the brass photo etch um, cooling jackets, they just dry-fitted. So that's just in there so I can have a look at it, see how it all fits and goes together. But yeah, if, you, if you're doing it like me and you want to make those up but then take them off for painting, you need to get those little um, ammo return pieces in because they make the whole thing hold together. So um, yeah, it was all falling off before. The tail plane, I have put on. Now this part and this part and basically the elevator, so the rotor of the elevator and this whole tail plane, they're basically all the same as a fuselage, the same sort of bluey grey, except for just this little section here on the, um, the elevator. So the undersides of the elevator are the tan colour. So I won't glue those on, that's just dry fitted for the moment. That's just sitting there dry fit. Uh, I will have it tilted down just a little bit because the photos I've seen that's kind of the position they are at rest and I never like to have my rudder straight so I've got a little bit of a bend on my rudder just because that is my want but I mean look at how big this thing is getting really it um, it is going to be a huge kit all right I'm going to get on with um, some of the rest of these parts here to make up the wings and then I can start painting now because I'm doing version A I get to use this middle section so you have the instructions the top wing is made out of three sections. Now there are two options. One has a much narrower hole, so I'm glad that I've chosen version A because I'm going to get to see a whole lot more underneath there of what's going on. <laughs> so as you've seen my previous video, you know my bugbear is how much of this is being covered up. Well, at least that um, that'll help me out. Now there's a lot of joining points. On these kits there, there really is and that's so they can get the um, the sprue in or you know the injection plastic in the styrene and um, and they can stay fairly thin I mean the molding is really good things go right down to a point look at that absolutely beautifully molded so cutting these off isn't hard you just cut those straight that's you know, no big deal at all cut those straight across oh they're tough and then um, get your sanding block and you're away. That's that's modelling 101, right? You've got no problem at all there. Okay, that one's easy. But these leading edge ones, like in all kits, are, are quite tricky. And in these, there's so much detail around. There's little rivets and things, the rib tapes, and the, there's so much going on. You really have to be careful. So my method for coping with that has been to first trim it off. We're using my side cutter well these are shear cutters i think they're called and they allow you to get fairly close without distorting so getting as close as i can cutting off which is only going to leave me a feather a feather of a little piece there and then i can get in i found filing was just not an option here the plastic is so soft so get in with my knife and try and run the profile of the wing so that um Basically, I'm not digging a hole. So I'm literally rubbing it along the actual plastic and then removing the hump. Very gently, very gently. Okay, and then with that pretty well accomplished, bit of scrape. 
Then I'm using one of these little sandy things, sanding sponges, so I can get the, the curve right. Yep. And then I'm finishing off with my, um, my multi-grade file here, which is, they're quite soft grades on it. I don't know what they are, but it's quite good. I think this actually is a Valley Ho tool. I forget, forget where I got it. It's just been invaluable. I haven't been able to replace it. So once it's fully worn out, well, that'll be it. And there we go. That um, It's all done by feel. That feels pretty good. So, um, yeah. The plastic is quite soft, so you can get a lot done very quickly, and that means you can end up with big holes if you're not careful. But, um, yeah, all come up good in the end. Now, the top wing came in three parts. As I said, this um, middle one, my option has a lovely big cutout. And they make together surprisingly well. The, um, the fit is quite good. Now, the only spot where there's a tiniest little line is under here, but you won't even see that. You, you'll never really get to see that, but I'll probably fill it anyway, just for the heck of it. But on this side, the top, the join can be pushed together so hard that it mates up beautifully. And I'll just have a little bit of sanding there just to smooth it all out. It'll be fine, and there's lozenge going on with this anyway. So um, building up of that wing is very easy. And the surprising part is you then, on the fuselage, there's um, these centre supports here, the carbine struts, right? And I thought I'd just check and see how the fit was. And you can't go wrong because one's a big hole and one's a little hole. So, um, you know, couldn't accidentally get your wing back to front. Fine, get the first one in, the front one in, that one. And then when you've done that, it actually holds in place. The fit is that good. So, that's hilarious. I have a photo here showing you how it all fit together and um, it just sat there quietly on my modeling bench with everything dry fit. One part that's really nicely molded are these struts. And normally with struts on biplanes, you know, you just get a little pointy bit and it sticks into the wing. And then when you need to tie off your struts, you've either got to put in some little uh, eyelets to run your um, line or, um, you know, you basically, my trick is usually just to wrap it around the base of the strut. But these are so well detailed. If you can see there, I know it's probably a bit tricky, but there is actually molded a tiny little eyelet. And they've got them all the way through on the end of every strut is one of these tiny, tiny little eyelets all ready for you to run your line through. So that makes rigging a lot easier. And also, I was worried about cutting them all off and not knowing which one was which. But on the mounting point, which is going to disappear into the wing, it says R for right, L for left. And you can tell which are which. The ones with the completely um, flat end, basically it's just a trapezoidal end, right? There for the rear. And the ones that have got a triangular end, they go at the front. So there's no reason I can't cut all those off and dry fit them and then pull them off for painting later because wingnut wings have very cleverly marked them so that I'll know which one goes where. So well done, Mr. Wingnut Wings. I um, am enjoying this kit more now as I get further into the build. struts are all labelled so I won't get them mixed up. I've got them in for a dry fit and it really does start to get the shape and bring this whole aircraft together and you can see why you don't want to get them wrong. They all have angles peculiar to each location and so that you know they are very specific for each slot. You put the wrong one in the wrong hole and it will not angle correctly into the corresponding hole on the other wing. Now another thing that you don't want to bugger up is um, these aerons. Now, um, they're pretty easy to get off the sprue and cut. They've got nice straight edges, but they're not completely flat. I don't know if you can see that. Right. Even the dog across the road is excited by it. They uh, they lift up, okay? So they're not... Um, they lift up on this edge. So you don't want to get them back in front. If I was to put this onto the starboard side, it would actually have a big lift there, which is not correct. But on the port side, it tapers down just that little bit. It basically bends down. So that's interesting. See if I can get it on here without buggering this whole thing. 
Well, it took a little bit of clamping to get this one on. The drive fit was so loose. So that was interesting. And quite frankly, I can glue these on now because the whole underside is going to be the tan color and the whole top side has the lozenge decals on. So that's fine. I mean, it's a whole piece. This whole wing is one continuous piece. So that's how it has to be. And the, um, the struts fit in nicely. So I'm pretty happy with that. I don't want to touch it anymore because it'll all just go ping. And uh, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll let it go ping because I'm going to paint it. But I wanted you to see how it all looks when it's all dry fit together. So next time they'll be painting and they'll be lodging. But for now, that's it. So it's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Ariadini.